does well to get it back to Andy Dibble. Straight back it comes again through to the other end. And the linesman have, has his flag up. Use of an elbow. As that one dropped out of the skies from Andy Dibble's punted boots. So Brentford, who really have commanded the game for long periods now, they've conceded a goal, just need to show all their character and resilience to steady things down and regain a grip as they lead here in the second half by two goals to one. And that is Paul Lake now down on the far side, filling in at fullback. Redmond once again just gets the better of Cadet. That one's over the head of Evans. Millen looking behind him to see where the defender was. And in fact the referee brings play back to just outside the Brentford box. And a free kick awarded against Terry Evans as that one just got away from the big number five for a second. Suddenly it's all gone quiet amongst the Brentford ranks, but the Man City supporters have found their voice. About 23 yards directly in front of Keeper Parks' goal. Brentford have every man back defending and they must get their wall right. It's driven into that wall by Hinchcliffe. Well, certainly the goal has given Man City a new lease of life. Throw in by the corner flag. Gary Mixon, a busy presence. Crowd wanted to see a handball there, not given. Terry Evans sensibly just letting the ball drift over his head. There's no danger, Brian Gale can't fasten on to the end of it. And the Bees have a goal kick. But whatever, it certainly set us up for a thrilling climax here in the second half. Terry Evans will be first to this one and finds Blissett, who goes in on a 50-50, and surely there was no foul there. But the referee, Roger Milford, sees it otherwise. I thought Blissett made a clean contact on the ball there with no physical contact on Brian Gale. So it's Man City then with a free kick. Now here's Wayne Biggins. Feeds a lovely ball into McNabb and as he gets the cross in and this time it's just hacked away by Jones and doesn't fall to a blue shirt and Brentford will be thankful that it didn't. Steve Redmond once again is keeping a sentinel eye on Richard Cadet, the Brentford leading scorer who has been limited to just a couple of half chances here so far in this game. But we all know you can't take your eye off Richard for a second. And I find that offside decision a little baffling. Ten yards inside the Man City half. Coming up to midway through the second half. Lovely dummy by Andy Simpson takes it away from Paul Lake. Now has he got the legs to sprint the length of the pitch? Lays it into the path of Roger Stanislaus. We've seen Roger come forward in this position before this season. Drives it in, and that nearly an end goal against the legs of the keeper, Blissett, gets it in, and he's put it in for number three. And what were the Manchester City defenders doing there? Because the cross from Stanislaus was nearly put past his own keeper by a defender but then surely they had time to hack it to safety and as three white blue shirts stood watching Gary Blissett powered in and scrambled the ball over the line and midway through the second half Brentford once again have restored their two goal lead it's Brentford three Manchester City one and Blissett gets his second of the game And Man City have got it all to do once again now, surely. Can they come back again? They're going to need to score. 
and they're going to need to find one quickly. Corner in for Man City, curling in under the bar. And a goal kick. Well, surely that will settle the nerves as Blissett has bundled in number three. It's got the crowd here singing once again. Pete Millen. Oh, my goodness me, does so well. Just caught with the outstretched leg by Trevor Morley. But didn't he show a mature touch there, turning away from danger? We have 20 minutes remaining of this fourth round FA Cup tie. And Cadet puts his head down and goes for goal. Fires one in and Dibble goes to his left and parries the ball away and Man City get it through. Up to the halfway line now with Morley and back they come now at the other end. Morley is flattened by Andy Feely. Play on, says the referee. McNabb, Gary Megson now really playing as an extra forward. And Roger Stanislaus takes it away from Danger Man White. And my goodness, it's just as well he did. Ball still in play. Gary Blissett goes charging after it with Steve Redmond. No foul as the two players clash. Shoulder to shoulder, said the referee. Brentford have a throw. And once again, they've taken this game by the scruff of the neck to throttle the life out of Manchester City. Oh, the home fans are really loving this. And up goes the cry once again around Griffin Park as Brentford surely are now on their way into the fifth round. Well, I have to say, scrappy though the third goal may have been, once again stemming from Roger Stanislaus's forward run, the scorer of a fine goal here against Northampton Town two weeks ago, after which manager Perriman told me if he was such a good defender as he is coming forward, then he's really going to be a great player. And there he was once again proving his worth as an attacking fullback, coming through on the overlap to fashion the goal which was bundled in by Gary Blissett for his eighth of the season and second of the game. And this time Blissett takes a shove from Brian Gale as the game begins to slip away from Man City. And they're starting to just look a little bit ragged. Blissett wins the flick on header in front of Brian Gale. Here's Cadet turning in the tightest of corners. Neil McNabb, he's had a good second half. Up to Wayne Biggins. First time for Gary Megson and taken on by Trevor Morley. Still Morley. And that one only finds Potter and he does the sensible thing. Playing the ball back fully 40 yards to keeper Tony Parks. And that very neatly takes all the heat out of the situation. Exactly the right thing to do then from the Brentford number six. Play on, says the referee. Annie Sinton now on the far side, looking to run makeshift fullback Paul Lake. And Roger Stanislaus once again is up on the overlap and looking for the killer ball, but it's in from Cockrum to Cadet. Can't keep his feet. And carried away from danger by skipper Steve Redmond. And he looks up and tries to get it on for Biggins, his flick header. It's too far forward for David White. So Manchester City, the team lying third in the second division, are in real danger of being put out of the FA Cup here by third division Brentford, who have been the better team throughout the game 